This video is about the most beautiful thing in the world, the thing that gives us joy, happiness, and the meaning of life. And that thing is, of course, money. My name is Vitaly, and this is my channel, Bare Basics Economics, where I make economics simple and clear. And this video is about the three key ideas of monetary theory. Money, money supply, and the reserve ratio. So what is money? You probably want to say, Vitaly, what a stupid question. Money is what I have in my wallet. For example, dollars or euros. First, nobody uses cash anymore. Today it's all credit cards and Apple Pay and credit cards. Second, the bank notes in your wallet are just colorful pieces of paper with cute pictures. But what makes them money? This is the definition of money. Money is the medium of exchange used to make payments. Money can be anything you use for payments. For example, banknotes and coins in your wallet. Is this money? Yes, it is money because you can use them for payments. Your debit card. Is this money? Yes, you can use your card for payments. It is money. Your checkbook. Is this money? Yes, it is money because you can use your checks for payments. Your credit card. Is this money? No. A credit card is a loan. It's a loan you take from a credit card company and you pay it off with interest. It's not money. Cigarettes are a universal form of money in prisons. Inmates use them for payments. And look at this beautiful shell. Many nations, many tribes were using shells for payments for centuries or even thousands of years. Shells used to be money. Next idea of monetary economics is money supply. And money supply is currency plus deposits. Money supply is currency, coins and banknotes plus deposits. Our deposits in banks. And most of our money supply is not banknotes. Banknotes take a tiny, teeny fraction of our money supply, about 8%. But the most of our money supply is not banknotes, it's bank deposits, ones and zeros in bank records. Most of our money is digital. To understand our next idea, the reserve ratio, we need to go back in time to the medieval times. In medieval times, goldsmiths were artisans who worked with gold. And people would often bring them valuables for safekeeping. And goldsmiths would give them receipts. I, such and such, took this much gold from such a person. And people realized that they could use those receipts for payments because it was easier to use receipts for payments than to carry heavy gold coins. And it was safer to leave gold with a goldsmith than to carry gold by yourself. And that was how goldsmith's receipts became the first paper money. And goldsmiths became the first bankers. And one day our goldsmith realized that he doesn't have to keep all gold ready for clients, that clients almost never take their deposits out. Our goldsmith realized that clients put gold in and take out a tiny, teeny fraction of their deposits. So, our goldsmith, our first banker, can keep a fraction of the deposits and lend the rest for profit to make money. That was true then and it's still true now. How many times you make a deposit, you put money in, and then you take all of it out? Probably not often. Probably never. This is how it works. Every time you put money in a bank account, the bank 
is going to keep a small part of your money as the reserve and it will lend the rest. And this is the third idea of monetary economics, the reserve ratio. The reserve ratio is the fraction of bank deposits that the bank holds cash reserves. And the formula is money in the reserves over money in deposits. In the United States, the Federal Reserve requires banks to have a minimum reserve ratio of 10% for checkable bank deposits. In Canada, the Bank of Canada doesn't have reserve requirements, so that Canadian banks choose their own reserve ratios, usually 2%. So if you think that you have money on your bank card, no, you don't. Most of this money is gone. Which means that every bank is a potential bankrupt. Every bank can survive as long as people take out no more than the reserve ratio, no more than 2% in Canada, no more than 10% in the United States. But if people take out more, that's a bank run, such a bank collapses. Which means that bank runs and financial meltdowns are inevitable. They're a part of our banking. They're a part of our economic system. A rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in US history. The bankruptcy of a global systematically important bank. Which bank will go down next? What a glorious mystery. First, a simple problem. The reserve ratio is 20%. If you deposit $500, how much will the bank reserve and how much will it lend? The bank will reserve 20% of 500, which is 100, and it will lend the rest. Now, a slightly more difficult problem. The reserve ratio is 20%. We don't know how much you deposited, but we do know that the bank reserves rose to $1,000. So how much did you deposit? We can recall the formula. The reserve ratio equals reserves over deposits. We can plug the numbers, solve the equation and get the answer $5,000. In this video, you learned what is money, what is money in economics. And in the next video, you will learn how money is created, how commercial banks create money out of thin air. So stay tuned, watch the next video and learn economics.